Wow, that looks and feels amazing. Wood finishes. What do I feel are the best three options for turning production bowls or for making furniture? For each of the three finishes, I'll show you my process and tell you why I would choose them. You're going to see the finished product of each type of finish throughout the video. What you've been watching me do is prepare our sample, and here it is. This is our sample bowl straight from the tool. All I've used are gouges, scrapers, and whatever wood turning tools that you saw. There has been no sanding. You can see there are tool marks on the surface, but it's clean. There are no torn fibers or ripped out grain or anything like that. We are excluding the rim at the moment. That will be done when we do the inside. I don't normally show sanding, but I am going to show you what the wood looks like after sanding. And the first sample is this. This bowl has now been sanded with 150 grit sandpaper. You could tell the tool marks are gone, but there are little lines left by the sandpaper. The next sample, I have sanded to 320. And in this sample, you can see those scratch marks are now gone. And this surface is really smooth and really clean. There is no real point to going any finer in sandpaper. And the reason is that the finish we're going to use is going to fill up whatever roughness you might think there is. So let's take a step back and look at the bowl at all three stages. We've got the tool only. It's got some lines. The 150 grit is better but the 320 grit really stands out. That's where I feel like this bowl is done. Surface prep is the key to all the rest of this. Make sure you've got a clean surface. The next step in my process is putting walnut oil on. This would be the finish I use if I want a really easy finish. If I want a natural look that doesn't have any kind of film on it, I want people to feel the wood. I want them to be able to reapply the finish whenever they feel like they need to because they can. It's just that easy and that simple to do. To apply the walnut oil, you saw me just kind of rub it into the wood. The end grain parts of the bowl will take a little bit more, but then I use a paper towel here to buff it into the wood and kind of burnish it in, essentially drying it. You can see that the walnut oil has given this bowl a very low shine and a deeper look. If I'm going to use walnut oil, it's because I want to bring out the grain in the wood. It's especially if you've got something like Manitoba maple or box elder or walnut, that'll just deepen the color of whatever wood you've got. The next step in my process is shellac. I apply it the same way I do walnut oil, just by adding it to the bowl with the lathe off. And you'll see that the end grain tends to soak up a bit more because it's more thirsty than the side grain is. But that's a really good way to apply it. Get a base layer on there and then spin the lathe and it will buff to a nice shine. I tend to use this finish when I'm bringing bowls to a store because they look more polished. Shellac also makes them more durable. The finish is a little bit harder. It soaks into the fibers of the wood and firms them up a bit more makes them more resistant to any kind of stains. Um, no wood or no product will ever get you no stains, but this will help quite a bit. It's also a really easy finish to reapply, and you can reapply it on top of the walnut oil or on top of just shellac again. It doesn't matter. It'll work just fine. If you want to deepen the shine further, you can add more shellac. It's that simple. Add a little bit to your cloth, put it on the wood repeat and repeat until you're happy with the level of shine you've got. This is the equivalent to French polishing. You might wonder why I don't just put the walnut oil and shellac together and I have done that. I've tried that and it works. It works all right but it doesn't quite work as well as this. What I like about this method the most is I can choose to add walnut oil to deepen the look of the wood and then add separate layers of shellac to further deepen the shine that it's going to give and I can adjust those components individually instead of being stuck with whatever mixture I've made. Let's take a closer look at this finish. You can see that it's shiny. It's pretty even for the most part except there's the odd spot that like right here you can see there's like a shine line that's extra shiny and the rest of it's maybe not so shiny in that particular area. 
but overall it's pretty good. The secret weapon to this particular style of finish is the beeswax. I'm going to add that on top of the shellac. And the way I apply it is by first grabbing one of my wife's favorite candles and using that because her beeswax candles happen to be perfect for this. And uh, like you saw, rub it onto the wood and then use a cloth to buff it in. And when I'm using that cloth to buff it in, I'm letting that heat generate so that it melts the wax onto the shellac and fuses all of that together. And what happens then is you get kind of a glassy finish. Uh, except it's not really glassy, maybe buttery is more of the right word. It's really silky, really smooth. And if you've sanded up to 320 or even probably at 150, except for those pesky scratch marks, it will fill in all those voids and it will feel very smooth. And here you can see the shine everywhere is very even. And it's deep and it looks great. It feels great. It's also a little on the waterproof side, at least for a little while. Um, and it's easy to reapply as well. Not as easy as walnut oil or shellac because you typically have to get something spinning at high speed. Let's put them all together again. On the left we've got walnut oil, in the middle we've got walnut oil with shellac, and then on the right walnut oil, shellac, and beeswax, which is my perfect finish is what I like to call it. But what if you don't have walnut oil or you just don't want to do all those steps? There is a short way. And it's actually a pretty good method also. So we've got to prep the inside of our bowl so that we have another test surface to use and it will allow us to see the difference. My second favorite method of finishing is jumping straight to shellac as it also tends to deepen the look of the wood but not as much as walnut oil does. You still get a decent level of protection as far as shellac goes and you can add as many layers as you want it's also still the same easy reapply type of thing. You can just add shellac to your piece of wood and it's going to look great. You can fix, repair, or re-shellac at any time you like. Applying shellac directly to the wood is the same as before. Really, I just take a bunch on a towel and rub it onto the wood and then spin it to buff it dry. And then I'll add any more layers of shellac that I like until I feel like I've got the right amount of shine that I want. You're seeing this in real time so you know how much work this actually takes. Let's look at this a little closer. You can see that the wood looks a little bit deeper in color, it's smooth, it's got a good shine to it, and it's really could be ready to use. Adding the beeswax on top of the shellac is just like before. Again, grab my wife's favorite candle, rub that thing all over the piece of wood, and then I'll buff it in with a paper towel. One thing to note is that if you're buffing with the paper towel or cloth or whatever and you, f you think you're done and you touch the piece of wood and it's still sticky, you need to change that towel over to get a, a clean piece because you need to remove all that excess. And once the excess is gone, it'll be smooth and perfectly polished. Let's take a closer look at this. You can see that there's a deeper level of shine. It's more even like before. It's not quite as deep in color as having walnut oil underneath, but it feels absolutely amazing. Let's compare the two. So on the left we have just shellac and beeswax, and on the right we have walnut oil, shellac, and beeswax. I hope this has been informative for you. If you like the video, give it a like, if you have a question, shoot me a comment. Subscribe if you think I've earned it. Thanks for watching.